Hello and welcome to Rock Your Block, featuring the introduction of our new segment entitled 495 Metro. Please join me in welcoming our new segment hosts, Trudy and Ed Richardson. Hello, Trudy and Ed. How are you today? Oh, we're um, good. Very, very good. good today. It's a nice rainy day, right? Yes. <laughs> How was that 495 traffic? <laughs> uh, it took me about an hour and a half to get here. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, everybody's watching. They know 495 on a Friday and the rain is no fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, I have 13 questions. And after today, people won't see me anymore. They'll see you guys. So I'm going to try to get to all 13 of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's get started. Um, tell me who inspired you guys as, as just as people. You want me to go first? Yeah. Uh, the people that inspire me are just regular, everyday people who I find who have been through, have a lot of challenges or traumatic experience in their life and I see them still moving on and going on. Uh, it sounds a little odd, but Jesus the man inspires me, his character. So people who have, who live to formulate a certain type of character with morals and values, those are the kinds of people that inspire me. Wonderful. Ed, what about you? Well, the type of people that inspire me are the type of people that uh, have demonstrated an ability to overcome adversity in their lives. Uh, they may have had humble beginnings uh, or they may have uh, started out from the top and maybe they experienced uh, uh, a drop off at some point in their lives, but mm -hmm. they fought back, they fought through uh, the adversity and they were able to triumph and and actually accomplish uh, the things that they set out to do in life. Um, the most inspirational person to me uh, is Dr. Martin Luther King. I take a great deal of, of inspiration from, from his life and the things he was able to do with it. Right. Well, Metro, 495 Metro, that is a very interesting name. How did you guys come up with that? Well, 495 Metro is meant to symbolize um, really the, the local community uh, around the Beltway. This is a, a very national and international um, area, but True. there are people who actually were born in this area, who actually live in this area, who are doing some, some really great things in the community. And we thought that uh, we would like to uh, have a, uh, an opportunity to celebrate them and, and give them an opportunity to tell their stories. That brings me to my next question. What kind of programming, what can we expect to see from 495? So uh, our uh, concept for 495 is to bring uh, various uh, professionals on and everyday people who are ha have a different way, uh, different outlook on life, uh, different experiences, uh, some entertainment and that oh, wow. is our uh, concept. When you say entertainment, what, what are you speaking of? What types of entertainment? Oh, uh, I think we'd like to bring on people who poetry, sing, oh, okay. writers. Mm -hmm. Good. But, yeah. but with, a local, with a local flavor, okay. you, you see there, there's, in my view, there are a number, number of really talented and, and creative people, so we, the programming and the type of people that we want to promote are people who have lived in the community, um, personal interest stories. Right. Um, as you know, there are many people in the community that do great things, uh, people who give out food, people who, who persevere to have helpful laws passed, uh, people who uh, are leading business people who give back into the community and, and many of these people do what they do in an anonymous way right. and, they, and they probably still would like to do them in an anonymous way but in, a, in an era where so much of our media is focused on maybe some of the more you know what I perceive to be negative uh, kinds of things we want to be a light we, we want to give people something to look forward every week with our guests and the kinds of subjects um, you know that we that we will uh, come come up with, if you will. Um, we we look for it to be a very exciting time. Do you plan to get into politics at all? Because that seems to be uh, such a critical piece 
uh, in our communities now? I would, personally, I would rather not get right. into the political aspects. There's so much more, I believe, in this area and to life than the, the we, I think we get enough of that on uh, every day through the media, uh, news, and uh, magazines, and so I'd rather stay away from that. Well, I, I agree with you. I think there are plenty of avenues people can uh, go to for politics and uh, religious kinds of things, but I, I, I think that what people need to hear more about are some of the, as you had mentioned, everyday down to earth, uh, people just making a difference. Right. You know, people who are, who are living out their values. And uh, I think regular people inspire other people, uh, no matter where they are, to, you know, to, to look forward in life and see what they can do with a life well lived. And uh, that's what, what we're hoping to bring to the table for our, for our viewers. Now there's one thing you guys didn't mention, and I think that's because you're so modest. Mm -hmm. Trudy is um, a master chef, in my opinion, mm -hmm. master cook, and you didn't mention that at all. <laughs> are you gonna have, uh, you're gonna visit the kitchen, our kitchen, our brand new kitchen? One of the things is because when we uh, sit down and we talked about the concept of the show, mm -hmm. and we're very much into, lifestyle changes. And one of the things, uh, because of health reasons for me, I have had to drastically change my eating habits. And so I'm constantly finding recipes and incorporating and making up recipes for a healthy living. So yes, I will eventually get in the kitchen. Oh, that's great. And share some of my recipes. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned that about uh, healthy lifestyles, in your research, what one or two things did you find to be the biggest problem with uh, people and bad eating habits? I think um, the concept that you can't, you cannot uh, enjoy food and, and uh, enjoy healthy food. People are still looking for the fat and the large portions and I think it's a change in mindset because that's what I had to do. I mean, I, like I said, I started having some health challenges. I, uh, I decided I chose to go to a naturopathic doctor and then I started to do my own naturopathic homopathic studies. And from there, you know, we need more to stress to eat more vegetables, right, um, less meat, uh, you know, carbs. You know, people always say, oh, you shouldn't have carbs, but there are good carbs out there that we need to have. And the exercise, it's a, it's a whole, this lifestyle change, this is a whole package, not only with the eating, but the exercise and a mental challenge. Right, mm -hmm. that's right, that's good. Well, I know that your show will deal a lot with self-help. Why do you think people need so much encouragement in this area of self-help? I think people are stressed and guilted out of living the lives they were meant to live and becoming the people that they were meant to be. And I think people are pretty smart about what they want out of life, but I think they need avenues or ways to go about getting it. And so while, while we won't pretend to have all the answers, we do feel like we have some tools that people will be able to use to help them reach the goals that they have in life, to, you know, to live the life that they were meant to live, to be the kind of people that they were meant to be, to enjoy life. I, I think this, the stress and the busyness uh, and, and you know, feeling uh, you know, guilty maybe because you made a mistake in life and then yeah. you know, giving up and that kind of thing, yeah. I think we need to get rid of that. I think society needs to grow uh, in, into what we can be. We need to think about how great we can be and, and not about mistakes or how things are. Uh, not to go on a rant, but uh, I'm disappointed uh, in this notion that we always have to cut this and cut that. I think what, what we really need to do as a society is, is be more creative. We need to look for opportunities to build. We need, we need to look for opportunities to grow. And by being creative and by creating opportunity, then I think the money and the resources will be there um, for, for all of us to, to, to be able to share and live the kind of life that, that we were meant to live. Trudy, would you agree with that? I, I agree with that, and uh, to add on to that, I think the growth comes from each individual 
deciding to make some changes in their own life to grow and mm -hmm. develop. And as we grow and develop and we share ideas and uh, kind of get out of the box to open up ourselves to, to new ideas, to new ways of living, I think we'll have a, uh, the society will change because I feel like right now our society is, we're such a mean, selfish Sound. society. Mm -hmm. And I think if people got outside of themselves and, and stopped judging people and stop, um, we're, we're, we're the party of no. Before we say yes, it's always a no. There's always a, an excuse why we can't. I think if we change our outlook on that, as a society, we'll grow. What do you guys think about, I know when I was coming up, it was always this thing about trying to keep up with the Joneses, that you didn't feel that um, you were worth anything unless you passed the litmus test that was already out there for everybody. What do, how do you feel? Do you think that still plays a part of people being depressed and people trying to reach uh, other people's goals? Well, uh, you know, we, we both have probably some different opinions about that, but my feeling is that if a person can come across the notion of, hey, you know, maybe I can set what I believe to be my own standard for success, and maybe I can set my own standard for for what what brings me satisfaction in life then it becomes less important to compare myself to what everybody else is doing i think a, a great deal of sadness is brought about when when people who have varying degrees of abilities and talents and you know we're all kind of different uh... And, and when we begin to compare ourselves uh, to other people and, and we begin to take our self-esteem or lack thereof because we can't run the fastest, jump right. the highest, sing the best, you know, right, that kind right. of thing. That's right. Those are not the only things that are available to us in life. Everybody has a, a gift that can be developed and, I, and I, I don't believe in the Joneses anymore. I think that that idea needs to go the way of the uh, dodo bird. <laughs> <laughs> the way of the dodo bird. On that note, <laughs> we are going to take a short break. We'll be right back, so don't touch that dial. Yeah, I, I just wanted to call and say it's, it's riveting. You know it's exciting television, even though the set falls down sometimes. The most stimulating and rewarding television viewing I do. Been watching it for years. It made a huge difference in my life. The program was excellent. This is the second time I've seen it. I would love to get the tape. He's great. I'd like to see him do more. Please encourage him. I just wanted to say how wonderful it is that perfect Estonian resident get to see their other cultures. I found this show very offensive. In fact, it was revolting. I was astounded watching the show. It was simply unbelievable. I watch this channel from time to time. Great that there are local people doing this kind of thing. And thanks for existing and bringing us this kind of programming. Do you have something to say about the programs on Channel 10? Call our viewer comment line and leave us a message telling us what shows you liked, what you didn't like, or if you need more information. Welcome back. You're watching Rock Your Block and our new segment hosts, Trudy and Ed Richardson for 495 Metro, a brand new segment featured on Rock Your Block. Prior to the break, we were talking about um, self-help and, you know, people striving for um, goals that are maybe not their goals or somebody else's goals. Another thought came to mind, you know, we are in the holiday season and you've got some people that are just happy, happy, happy. And then you've got other people on the other end that are really, really down and depressed around this holiday season. Do you think the holidays are overrated or what, what do you think about that? What do you think causes people to be so, some of them so depressed at this time of year? Well, I, I, there are numerous reasons why, why people are depressed, but uh, if we're going to look at uh, the keeping up with the Joneses, I think people get depressed because they want to go out and they want to buy all of this stuff for their loved ones when they really can't afford to buy it or they buy it and then they go into debt. And I think that we've taken the focus off of Christmas. I mean, Christmas comes now in October. I was picking up uh, Halloween candy and I was almost to the register and realized this is Christmas candy. It's like, what is <laughs> Christmas candy doing out at Halloween? Yeah. And so I, for me, like last year, uh, 
because of a lot of various things going on in our life, it was a stressful, stressful time of the year. And I decided last year that I was going to make some changes in the way we celebrated Christmas, the way we decorated. And I just took one thing out, and that was all the running around, trying to buy, and making sure all the packages were wrapped and, and at a certain time. I decided last year I wasn't going to do that. And last year was one of the happiest Christmas I had because I felt like I was celebrating every day day working its way up to Christmas without the gifts, without the spending of the money. Right. Mm -hmm. Was it hard for the kids? Because a lot of people say, well, it's the kids, you know, if you don't do this and if you don't get into the groove of what everybody else is, you know, your kids are going to cry mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> mutiny on the bounty. <laughs> you know, well, what do you, how do you... How well, do you... I don't have any little kids anymore but my grandkids. Right. And one of the things, because, like you said, I spend a lot of... grandkids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. That, that is meaningful to them because when they were like three and four years old, I started every year uh, them cooking. So the, the big thing for them for Christmas is cooking and making Christmas cookies and giving them to their friends now. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we try to de-emphasize all the gift giving. We right. try to emphasize That's more good. the family and the laughter and listening to music mm -hmm. and singing around the house right. and that's kind of a tradition we're putting into them. I like that. What say you, Ed? Well, you know, this is going to be the beauty of 495 Metro because there are going to be some divergent, uh, you know, ideas uh, <laughs> as we go forward. See, I, I understand. It's a count and <laughs> counterpoint. <laughs> yeah, you know, I understand the, the, as a businessman, I understand the, uh, what Christmas means to a lot of businesses. And that's one of the reasons why the season starts so early. Uh, Christmas financially provides uh, part-time business jobs for a lot of people. It, it, true. it you know, it, 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 Christmas, the, the, the holidays really, Thanksgiving, even beginning at um, Halloween, Halloween, which yeah. has become mm -hmm. a, a, a wow, unbelievable <laughs> worldwide you know, yeah, holiday. You know, <laughs> so I understand all of that, but you know, here again, you have to. Each person has to to do some hard thinking about how they're going to celebrate a particular holiday and the attitude that they're going to bring to that particular holiday. And they've got to be able to do that without being judged by other people who think that they should celebrate it one way or another. So in my view, I like the gift, the gift giving if I'm able, but I don't want to feel guilty if I'm unable to give. Right. To me, the season is more about connecting and engaging with the people that I, I love, the people I haven't seen, you you know, maybe for since Christmas of last year, it's about the family, and we love our grandkids. We enjoy, uh, we enjoy watching them open presents for us. That's as, that's as big of a thrill uh, as when when I was a young man and was opening presents on my own. So I, I, I do. My heart does go out to people that, for various reasons, find the season depressing. And, and I think that, that part of the reason why they find the, the season depressing is because they may miss the people in their lives that weren't there. Right. And so what has to happen in their lives, they have to find a way to celebrate the memory instead of becoming depressed because of the memory. Yeah. And that may mean making new friends. It may mean getting in touch with someone who who perhaps is in the same, you know, kind of boat that they're in. Uh, it, it, it's an opportunity to, to grow, if you will, and to experience uh, the holidays on another level. Right, that's right. Um, there are two components or attrib attributes that you talk about, you're going to be talking about on 495, and that is keys to living a successful life mm -hmm. and goal setting. Mm -hmm. What are your opinions about these two attributes? For us, it's how we live our lives. Uh, I'd say for about the past 25 years, Ed has always read a lot of self-help books and he's always educating himself. And through our marriage, we kind of joined together to make it a joint effort. And one of the things that we do yearly and we revise it throughout the year is that every year we set up we sit down and we write goals 
that we'd like to accomplish for the following year. And then things change and we revise the goals. So goal now, is setting. Is that everybody? Is that you and Ed and the kids and the grandkids or just mm -hmm. basically you and Ed? Just Ed and I. Okay. And we encourage our kids, but like most kids, <laughs> they're, they're growing. Let's yeah. put it that way. Mm -hmm. So we, um, for us, um, setting goals and the way we've set up our lives, I mean, we're, I say we're followers of Christ. So that's mm -hmm. a big part of our life. Mm -hmm. But we also have um, a lifestyle that we follow outside of that that connects. You want to help me <laughs> explain? <laughs> well, you know, bit? for, for uh, your, our viewers right now and people who may uh, tune in to uh, 495 Metro, uh, you know, people are, are complex but simple at the same time. I know that sounds a little strange, but there is a spiritual aspect of every person. Some, in some people, it's more developed than in others. There is a intellectual aspect of people. There is an emotional aspect. I mean, right. on down the line, all right. of the, all of the things that make us up as as human beings. So, in in my view, when you're talking about goal setting and personal improvement, the first decision that that one has to make is one has to say, you know what. I choose to change. Mm -hmm. I choose to change. I'm making a decision. And once you make that decision, then you have to create a plan for yourself. No one said it was going to be easy. Some folks have a very difficult time thinking on their own. So they start asking this one, what do you think about that? And another one, what do you think about this? And really what you have to do is be a little bit possessive with with your hopes and dreams a little bit secretive about it right. but you have to make a plan you have to have even a bad even a bad plan is better than no, no plan, plan at, at all, all yeah, right yeah. so so you start small maybe the plan is just to get up every morning at a certain time and read something that inspires you for some <coughs> people it could be a self-help book for some people it might be the bible for some people it might be a nice novel for some, it just depends but you get in touch with yourself and you begin to educate yourself and you'll find that if you can, you know, if you can read like a book a month, that's 12 books right. by the end of the year. You can get quite an education on any subject that you want if you read 12 books about it. Can you give us um, some uh, references of some books that you think would be good? Well, uh, there's, two kinds of, there's two kinds of books that I like. I like books that I can read and books that I can listen to. For me, the car can be a mobile university. So um, I don't know if, uh, if I should mention the actual brand name, but we, we're big fans of Audible books because you can download those onto your, your uh, smartphone and then you can listen to those things in the car. The, the book that I'm listening to right now is called Mindset. And it talks about the difference between having a fixed mindset and a learning mindset. And the gratifying thing is that what is no, the difference between it, the well two? fixed fixed mindsets are you see evidence of it um, everywhere in society today people who can't change we've always done it this way okay. that's always worked for us and yeah. this is the way we're going to continue to do it and uh, the learning mindset is like okay we've always done it this way but is there a better way can we tweak it can we what have we learned by doing it this way um, People who love to learn uh, at all ages, and this is the beautiful thing about the mindset of an individual, is that it doesn't matter how old you are. You right. can be 3, 30, or 90, and you can still learn. And, and, and learning is what life is, is really all about. We, we have this notion that once we graduate from school, many of us, that the learning stops. Right. Or, you know, once we quote unquote retire from life, the learning stops. Or, or we're too busy to read a book. We're too busy. That's like saying, I'm too busy to improve. Right. And, uh, you know, not to get too overly passionate about it. Learners progress, and those with a fixed mindset stagnate. Right. Well, we have, we have a couple more minutes. Uh, Trudy, can you tell us, uh, for 495, what, what message, overall message, would you want the viewers to know about the upcoming segment? Uh, I'm trying to put it in a phrase. Um, I guess I'd like 
the viewers to come back and see us and find out a little bit more specifically what we have to offer or what we have to share with them to help to make them to focus, make plans, and make their world better, their own personal world. Because like Ed said, we're all different. So what would make me happy may not make you happy, but in what we're having to share,